Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. Now we'll move on to a different genus of gram-positive cocci, the Streptococcus genus. Unlike the staph genus, which form clusters, streptococci grow along a single axis and form long chains or pairs. The first group of streptococcus that we'll cover is strep pyogenes, also known as group A strep. So watch as we transform pyogenes into a scene we'll call the Pygenes Bakery. Let's get started. We've got a lot to cram into this video, so the backdrop will be pretty simple, and I'll also try to keep my explanations as brief as possible. The Pygenes specialize in making pies, so let's start by drawing a pie and we'll cover it in a nice glass capsule that bakers would use when it's on display. This glass capsule looking dome is going to represent that group A strep is encapsulated. You'll notice we specified that this is hot apple pie. The H and A in hot and apple actually stand for hyaluronic acid. Strep pyogenes capsule is made out of hyaluronic acid. And we also actually produce hyaluronic acid in our connective tissue. And this is good to know because if we already have hyaluronic acid everywhere in our body, this means that the pyogenes capsule cannot be immunogenic, or else our own immune system would constantly be attacking us. Now we're drawing a heating lamp over the pie. Notice anything special about the bulb? Yep, that B in the bulb's filaments means that it's our beta hemolytic light bulb. So group A strep is beta hemolytic. Let's dive into some clinical features of pyogenes and discuss the pyogenic infections that it can cause. They'll all be represented by our first pyogeny baker holding this pie. And there are three main ones that we're going to talk about. The first is impetigo, a pyogenic skin infection that is said to look honey-crusted. This is represented by our honey-crusted lemon pie. But remember, impetigo can also be caused by Staph aureus. So if somebody has impetigo, it doesn't necessarily mean they have a group A strep infection. The second pyogenic infection we'll talk about is pharyngitis, or more commonly known as strep throat. We'll represent this by drawing on a red handkerchief. So when you see it, think of a really, really red erythematous and inflamed throat. Again, that's for pharyngitis. The third condition is really two conditions, cellulitis and erysipela, but they're very similar. All erysipela is is basically a very superficial cellulitis infection with well demarcated borders. Strep pyogenes is the most common cause of erysipela, so we'll represent these two by drawing big red mittens on this baker, which indicates erythema of his skin. So we've just covered three pyrogenic infections. 